Let's talk about uptime monitoring. As IT admins, we've got dozens, if not hundreds, of critical servers and services to manage. So knowing immediately when something is down goes a long way towards maintaining a healthy infrastructure for your organization. And I know that saying that out loud sounds like it came from an AI marketing bot, but this is a real problem and something that we here at Crosstalk just invested a significant amount of time trying to figure out. We just launched a new managed network service where we will fully update and monitor your network for you and respond to any outages as quickly as possible. And as part of these new managed network plans, we wanted to find the absolute best and most feature-rich yet cost-effective solution to monitor external services and connections, notify us via email and SMS and Discord or Slack, and even provide value-added services to our customers, such as personalized status pages for their services. So I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple of different solutions. One is gonna be a paid solution and one is going to be an open source solution that you can implement in your own environment to keep those critical services monitored. Okay, let's get started. Now, as I already mentioned, we just launched some managed network services here at Crosstalk, and we tried to put as much value into these as possible. Now, at the low end, we've included monthly updates for your network gear, off-site backups, as well as proactive alerting. With our higher tiered plans, you get all of that that I just mentioned, plus regular network security checkups for best practices. We also include additional support time that rolls over month to month, as well as external service monitoring like we're discussing in this video. These network maintenance plans are especially helpful for businesses who don't have the budget for full-time or even part-time IT staff, but you still want eyes on the network as well as regular security security and firmware updates for your gear. And like all of our other services, these plans are month to month with no contract or commitment. And you've got the amazing team here at Crosstalk overseeing your network so that you don't have to worry about it. You can find a link with more info about our new managed service plans down in the description below. Now we looked over the total landscape of external monitoring tools out there. And ultimately we were deciding between two main options the open source tool Uptime Kuma, and the paid cloud-hosted Uptime Robot. Now, I don't wanna bury the lead here, but ultimately for our own purposes, we went with the paid service, and I'm gonna explain that decision as well as the extra features that we wanted later in the video. But let's start with the free open source Uptime Kuma, which calls itself the fancy self-hosted monitoring tool. And like a lot of open source tools, while Uptime Kuma is free to download and install, you still need to host it somewhere, right? So that's gonna be in a virtual server like DigitalOcean or Vulture or on bare metal hardware. It runs in a Docker container and it allows you to do a lot of different types of monitoring. HTTP, TCP, ping, DNS, as well as some service specific monitors like Steam gaming servers, as well as Radius. If it detects changes in status, it can notify you via email, Slack, Discord, Teams, webhooks. I mean, basically whatever tools that you use, it can probably work with. It also looks great. It's got a nice responsive interface and you can set up custom status pages based on groups. So for example, if you're hosting Uptime Kuma monitors on behalf of customers, or if you want to monitor status by physical location. You can also customize the status pages with your own logo as well as CSS. All in all, Uptime Kuma is impressive. It's a really nice feature-rich solution. If you're gonna self-host on DigitalOcean or any other provider, your virtual server has to be powerful enough to run Docker, of course, but you'd also want sufficient space for your logs or other data. You could probably get away with a one CPU, one gig of RAM droplet, uh, which is kind of like their minimum installation, which is six bucks a month on DigitalOcean. Uh, but for a larger install, I would say maybe bump it up to the one CPU, two gigs of RAM option that has 50 gigs of storage space for 12 bucks a month. Now in this video, I am not detailing like the full setup instructions for Uptime Kuma in Docker, but let me know if that's a video that you'd be interested in and I'd be happy to oblige. Ultimately though, for our purposes, we didn't go with Uptime Kuma, even though it's the cheaper option. It just didn't have some of the features that we really wanted 
given that we're using this as a value added service for our own customers. And primarily what it boils down to is users and permissions. Uptime Puma only allows for a single user, the admin user. You don't get any sort of like role-based permission structure. So imagine if I'm hosting Uptime Kuma on behalf of our customers, and I wanna create custom status pages on a per customer basis. With Uptime Kuma, all of that is public, so you can't password protect those status pages, nor can you create users that have like view only roles. Now, I'm sure you could do some sort of workaround with Apache or Nginx, but we really wanted a solution that worked out of the box, so we landed on Uptime Robot. Uptime Robot is 29 bucks per month for their annual team plan, which gives us the ability to create those custom status pages and add password protection. Now it's a cloud hosted app, which I know a lot of people don't like, but it works well for our purposes. And that's one less server that we have to keep up to date in our own infrastructure. One downside is that if we wanted to monitor internal resources that aren't exposed to the internet, you can't really do that with Uptime Robot, whereas you could install Uptime Kuma behind your firewall in Docker or even in Windows to monitor those local resources. But the extra users and permission structure was really our deciding factor here. And other than that, Uptime Robot and Uptime Kuma are pretty similar in overall functionality. You get all sorts of different monitors for servers and services. You've got tons of different ways to push notifications and you don't have to install or maintain a Docker container with Uptime Robot, so it's easier to administer overall. My recommendation on Uptime monitoring, if you're okay with DIY, you absolutely wanna self host and you don't mind a little extra effort, then Uptime Kuma is a really solid option and definitely more cost effective overall. But if you'd like something that's a bit more fully featured out of the box with zero server setup and no ongoing maintenance since it's a cloud app, then I would take a look at Uptime Robot. I should mention too that if you don't have a ton of services to monitor, Uptime Robot does have both a free option that's pretty limited, but it's okay if you just wanna try it out. And they've also got a cheaper solo plan that gives you more features for fewer devices to monitor, uh, but it's a lot cheaper. If you are interested in Uptime Robot and you found this video to be helpful, be sure to check them out using my link down in the description. That doesn't change your price at all, but it does give us a few bucks for the referral. And other than that referral link, I have no relationship with either Uptime Robot or Uptime Kuma. I haven't spoken with anyone at either of those organizations. This is just a bunch of info that we found out when we researched this topic for ourselves. And if you know of other uptime monitoring solutions that I didn't mention in this video, be sure to pop your own recommendations down in the comments. And if you'd like to keep this party going, I have hand selected a couple of videos on the right here for you to watch next. The top video is our deep dive into spanning tree protocol. And the bottom video is my review and explanation of the new $5 per month standby mode for Starlink.